was a fun Sveshnikov game to play, especially in a three-minute game, because my opponent played a line that I had never seen before, never studied, and it wasn't in any of my notes. So kudos to the surprise, and I want to see how you react to facing this idea. Now, I have been aware of this knight d5 move since... What was it chess master grandmaster edition this was like the early 2000s when it came out because josh waitskin had a number of videos in that uh program and i believe the first time he played for a national championship he got this position and got mauled or it was colors reversed and he had this position and mauled his opponent and this is a very dirty line, and now almost everybody knows it and plays it because it got super popular during the Caruana Carlson World Championship match. Well, we need to take here, because knight c7 is a big threat, and the old main line was playing knight e7. And here's the idea. c4, and if a6, I just want your knight to go away. No, no, no. If you take, I take your rook. So what they're hoping for with white, and already you got a pretty bad position, is bishop d7, and you had a bad day. That is... Uh, it's disgusting. So as a Sveshnikov player, this is one of the first things you need to learn is playing against d5. So it's like, okay, I'm aware of this. And I know the old main line's knight e7. I'm going to do the more modern knight b8 because the knight's going to come to d7. And I'm not interrupting the defense of the bishop. And it, it's, it's just an easier life. Well, my opponent plays queen f3, and I'm like, okay. Never seen that before. I don't get it. a6, go away. And he's like, no, I'm not going away. It's like, okay, friend, I'll... I'm not going to take your knight. I just want to castle and get developed. And it was at this moment, it's like, did I just fall into some opening trap? But this doesn't, this doesn't make much sense because I played natural moves that I know are accurate so far. So try to give yourself some pressure here. You don't want to move the bishop because of taking on d6. So I rationalize that I need to go ahead and stop this idea at six. And here, I'm like, okay, bishop b4 is a threat, but I don't see what I can do about it. So let's go ahead and castle. And this is a critical moment. In fact, this is something that I thought was beautifully intricate. So when you're studying positions in chess, I think my opponent played a line that he knew was objectively bad, but it's quite complicated. And especially in my case, I don't have a lot of experience with Espechnikov. Never seen this position in my life. I uh, reacted poorly here, as there is only one. One way to handle this position. So pause your video, see if you can figure out what best play is. Now, me, in a practical situation, I think that I've screwed something up. It's a three-minute game. So I play a quick move, admitting that I've gone wrong, that I'm losing a pawn, and I just hope for the best. My position's dead lost after my next move. So see if you can't do better than I did. Well, even when the computer told me the best move here, I, I was like, uh, okay, I don't get it. <laughs> but... We'll see quickly why it's the best move. Queen d7. And here's the idea. Everybody's piled up on d6. Here's the issue with white taking. If it takes, a5, go away. Like I said, it's intricate. <laughs> Finally... 
we take there, and we're winning material. So you got to know this if you're playing this knight b8 line against, uh, we'll say, the Caruana stuff, as he's the one who's really put more flavor into it. So knight takes d6 is wrong, so the best move is actually castle's queenside, where it gives us time to hold. And you're just slowly uncoiling here. And this is a dynamically balanced position. So a little theoretical lesson in this interesting queen f3 side line. And this is why I like playing, especially if I'm experimenting with a new opening. I play hundreds of games in Blitz online. Because I'm looking for these types of responses that a lazy author may or may not have put this in their text. Go watch out for this. You need to uh, learn through experience. And I'd much rather lose a blitz game that doesn't matter on Lee Chess or Chess.com than a tournament game because you didn't study hard enough. I played bishop f5, <laughs> so let's see how I finesse my 2400 plus rated opponent. Knight takes, well, not much of a decision there. I'm like, okay, well at least my rook's gonna swing over and I'm gonna be good. He goes bishop c4 and I'm like, you know, let's see if we can't distract this guy a little bit. Give me that pawn. And that was a terrible move, because in this position, it's actually white to play and win. And thankfully, it's the position's complicated enough, and it's a fast time control that my opponent did not have enough time or did not consider it. It's just like, I'm up a pawn of the bishop pair, my opponent's not even developed. I'm, I'm just going to play normal moves. Well, actually, he didn't play a normal move. He played a move that took him from a winning position to, why did you do that? Well... Best for white is rook c1, and after bishop f5, the key idea is capturing with tempo as I'm going to push the pawn and the rook on f7 is pinned. My opponent saw this idea with the discovery and goes bishop e7. Well, the problem though is I can just take. And now, it's a bit of an interesting position. So, rook c1. Now, this looks uncomfortable for black. And I'll be honest that I objectively did not know the evaluation when the game was happening. It's like, you know, it'll be a knight and bishop versus rook, but that pawn on d6 is kind of dangerous. He's definitely going to be getting into the 7th rank or 8th. So what's best play here? How can I limit counterplay as much as possible to try to uncoil over time? Maybe I can set up a blockade. So I went with the most flexible move to start with, which is bishop f5, which is just controlling c8 so I don't have to worry about any back rank make threats. So he takes and goes rook c7, and I had no way of holding everything. And I thought it was more important to give the b-pawn in order to uncoil than to allow, say, rook c8 if the bishop went somewhere else, and I can't move pieces. So he grabs the pawn. Like, okay, let's keep an eye on that one. And I was worried that I might hallucinate something. So, like, if my bishop could potentially get kicked, like if I take, he checks, I go king e7, g4... And, you know, in fast games, you can definitely miss things. So I play h5 first because I don't think the d6 pawn's going anywhere, and I don't have any obvious weaknesses. I've set up a nice blockade, and I don't need to be in a hurry. So rook c1. Let's grab that. Now, no problems here. So bishop e6. So he's going to use his queenside pawn majority to create a pass pawn. So I start using my majority on the other wing. And takes, takes. And this was a critical moment because I took with the wrong piece. Very natural, but much stronger is bishop d5. 
and I've got the pawns connected in the center. And yeah, easy, easy way to play this for black. And it will be a trivial win. So after bishop takes b6, my opponent missed best opportunity here, which I just simply with rook a2 want to get behind the pawn. He should stop this idea. And now I have to play accurately, which I don't know if I would here. Check. You need to come back, admit you were wrong, and get the rook underneath where the engine gives this zeros, but from a practical standpoint, I still prefer black because I've got a blockade and white clearly can't make progress. Black has the potential to make progress. Rook C to C7 was played in the main game, and I am back to winning as that pawn's not going anywhere. You can't push the B pawn. And time trouble caught up to my opponent around here, and everything just fell apart as I think he missed that I could take back with a bishop, and yeah, GG. Very interesting game with this knight d5 line in the Sveshnikov. And like I said, queen f3, if you play this position with black or are interested, you need to, to know this critical line that after bishop b4, queen d7 only because if knight takes d6, it's a string of only moves. And when I talk about theoretical positions, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You need to know the exact moves this is what Chessable was designed for in training. Same moves over and over and over to make sure you got it forever. Versus, like in the last game, or game before last, yeah, game before last, where in the Speshnikov they played knight b3. All I need to know here really is bishop b4 and d5. I need to play for d5 because he's left the space behind. So hopefully you're still enjoying this series. If you are, like and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your support. Thanks.